You're looking right now at pictures of the inaugural rehearsal underway right this second, but at least 18 members of the House, Democrats, say they're not going to attend. Will those numbers grow? Stay with us. Uh, I don't see this president-elect as a legitimate president. I, I think the Russians participated in helping this man get elected, mm -hmm. and they helped destroy the candidacy of Hillary Clinton. Congressman John Lewis, Democrat of Georgia, questioning the legitimacy of Donald Trump's presidency. Trump responded yesterday morning, tweeting, quote, Congressman John Lewis should spend more time on fixing his help and helping his district, which is in horrible shape and falling apart, not to mention crime infested, rather than falsely complaining about the election results. All talk, 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 no action or results. And then, as we all know, sad. Will more Democrats follow the lead of Lewis and boycott the inauguration, or will they follow the lead of President Obama? Here with us to talk about all of this and more, former Republican presidential candidate and senator from the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Rick Santorum, former Democratic Ohio State Senator Nina Turner, Sarah Isker Flores, Attorney General designee spokesman, I mean, you're the spokesman for Jeff Sessions, <laughs> and Mark Morrell, president of the National Urban League and former mayor of New Orleans. Thanks one and all for being here. Thank Lots you, to Jake. talk about. Uh, Mr. Mayor, let me, let me start with you. Mm -hmm. What do you make of... The, the, the fight between uh, President-elect Trump and, and John Lewis. Um. John Lewis is a great American, an American icon. Nothing Donald Trump says will diminish <laughs> from his standing <laughs> and from his legacy. But let's not let all the smoke of the conversation get away from the fire of whether Russia uh, was involved in our elections process. That is something that has to play out. It's got to be fully and fairly investigated. So in all of the discussion, we shouldn't lose the essence uh, uh, of the issue. Uh, John Lewis raised that once again. Uh, members of both the Republican and Democratic Intelligence Committee uh, in the Senate have raised that. There needs to be a complete investigation. I'd like to see a select committee, a bipartisan commission, something that could be done in public because it's damaging to democracy if a foreign power was involved in our elections process. And we will talk more about Russia in the next block, but Senator Santorum, let me ask you. I understand that you would take issue with the question of whether or not President-elect Trump is legitimate. You heard Dennis McDonough. I think we all should take issue with well, it. I, well, I, don't heard... think, I don't think it's just should me to take issue with this. Okay. The idea that we're actually questioning the legitimacy of Donald Trump's election at this point in time is absurd. And I think Dennis McDonough said the same thing, that President Obama considers him to be a freely and fairly elected president. That said, I just want to ask you, as a, as a political matter, if Donald Trump had said to you, what do you think, how do you think I should handle this? What would you have said? Well. Look, Donald Trump's president, and I'm not, so I'm not giving Donald Trump any <laughs> advice on how to handle these things. What Donald Trump has done uh, throughout the course of his, uh, this, this campaign is break every single rule, and it's working out pretty well for him. Uh, to attack John Lewis, I think the last thing he said in his tweet was right. It's sad. Uh, John Lewis has a, is a, is a great, was a great civil rights leader 50 years ago when he, when he uh, made his mark and, and, and continued to make a mark. But, look. John Lewis said some things he should not have said and is doing something he shouldn't do. And, and, that's, and that's, that to me is sad because I think it does create a little stain on, on what is otherwise a, a terrific record. I guess one of the things is, um, without taking issue with what Senator Santorum said, and I'm sure you would agree, President-elect Trump is a legitimate president, I don't know that it doesn't hurt him. I mean, uh, uh, President-elect Trump. Because you have a president-elect who is coming in as the least popular president-elect in history, or at least in, in modern history, uh, his approval ratings are under 50 percent. He's, according to polls, his approval ratings among independents is actually going the wrong way. Uh, this is normally a time when you know, George W. Bush was at 61 percent right. approval ratings. President-elect Obama was at something like 80 percent approval ratings. This is a time for uniting to get the country behind you so you can do what you need these guys in the building behind me to do. Right. Well, I, I do think that we're seeing just a different political atmosphere than we've ever seen before. And for all the Democrats who decried the delegitimization of President Obama, as they should have, um, they're by, very led silent. Led by Donald Trump, by the way. <laughs> they're very silent this time around. And John Lewis should know better. That's what's so frustrating. This is about the office. It is not about the man. And I do think that Donald Trump will actually go in with uh, a different honeymoon period, but it will be a honeymoon period. I think that Congress is ready to get to work on a bunch of items. The last president was uh, having several executive actions that were unconstitutional. The Supreme Court struck down one after the other because he couldn't find a way to work with Congress. So the question for this president is, 
going in, his approval ratings set those aside. Frankly, those are fairly meaningless compared to can he go to that building and actually cut deals and negotiate to get things done. And I think we're seeing so far as just president-elect that he's making some good progress on that. Here's the yeah. thing. John Lewis put Democrats in kind of an awkward position on Friday. A lot of Democrats are like, oh, no, now I'm going to have to be forced <laughs> to defend Donald, uh, President-elect Trump. Now, I, I think that President-elect Trump Change the dynamic by engaging with him. Yes. But, but that was, uh, a lot of Democrats had raised their eyebrows at John Lewis doing that. Well, he's Congressman John Lewis. I just want to say that to, to make sure that we give him the requisite respect that he deserves. And 50 years ago, everything that he did is still important today. Now, I, as a Democrat, we know that the Russians had some impact, but they didn't go vote on election day. They didn't mess with the electronic data. So there are some Democrats that get that, and they didn't write the emails. Democrats are going to have to wear that. But at the same time, what the president-elect needs to do, this is not the apprentice, the White House edition. His tweets were insensitive. For him to categorize Congressman Trump, uh, excuse me, Congressman Lewis's district as, as, as in bad shape. Crime infested. Crime infested. It's not, by the way. Fortune 500 companies. It's about 58% African-American. Right. Institutions are higher it's learning. Bad. It is diverse ethnically and it is diverse economically. So my memo to my, to my, to my white elected officials, not just uh, President-elect Trump, but a, li a lot of white elected officials make this mistake in making the African-American community a very a homogeneous. They, they read us the wrong way. They think everybody's poor, everybody's broken down. That is not the truth. So they need to come and visit some African-American communities and see the diversity of that community. The president is going to have to let some of this stuff roll. President-elect will have why, to let some of this stuff roll why off, Why does Jake? President Trump has have to have to be the bigger man when you've seen <laughs> uh, calls for recounts, calls for Russia involvement, like after thing I'll after thing trying to delegitimize the president? I'll tell you the why, because when, the when you're president, man. you got to take the heat. And uh, that was what you were saying when Donald Trump was people, attacking President Obama. Personally, yeah, but Do President Obama took the heat. He rose with dignity. He did. And he took all the low blows, and he's going to leave office with one of the highest approval ratings of any president in modern American history. So the verdict is in on President Obama. He took the heat. I would suggest uh, that in this instance, uh, if you're concerned about America's urban communities, assemble a team of people who understand America's urban communities. Let's have a public policy discussion. Let's understand, as Nina says, great cities like Atlanta, Chicago, Philadelphia, New York, small towns like Scranton have problems but have tremendous, tremendous successes and assets. Let's not downgrade these communities. That's right. Hold on right there. Stay with us. Coming up in just five days, Donald Trump will be inaugurated as the next president of the United States. Predictions from our panel on what surprises the big day will bring. Stay with us. I'm all that techie stuff you got crammed into your brand new car. I'm so sexy, you can't keep your hands off me. Do it again. Hey.